Good morning, this is Crystal Woods with Seasons in the Vine and it's Fresh Friday and here we are as uh, promised last week and Lord willing, <laughs> he backed that up. Um, we're doing testing spirits, testing of the spirits um, and we're going to be all over the Bible today. I'm even going to pull something from the Old Testament that I was just reading through because I'm always in the Old Testament like as my in my personal Bible reading every day. I'm always in the Old Testament, I'm always in the New Testament and um, I came across something just because it, it's his timing um, that I want to bring up a little bit later. That was something seen in the Old Testament that still is relevant today. Just really cool. So, testing of spirits is really a big deal. It's super important. But I'm going to um, keep it about what the Bible is saying about it. And then at the end, um, I'll share some things that I think the Bible definitely confirms. Um but more just from like what I've seen and then you can take it or leave it, test it, right? Um, ask the Lord about it, see if any of that has made sense in some of the things that you've seen. And so testing of spirits is most commonly linked to, uh, testing of spirits or the discerning of spirits because uh, there is a manifested gift of the Holy Spirit that we see in 1 Corinthians 12 about discerning. Uh, spirits. And that is really related to prophetic words or utterances of wisdom, uh, words of knowledge. Um, it's really about what the mouth is speaking. And so where does that come from? So contextually, it's been fun to do some study this week because in the pagan culture, uh, there were lots of utterances and prophecies and things spoken. Um, but now that these people are saved out of their pagan culture and they're Christian, when the Holy Spirit come, came, and then is in Corinth in particular, where we see that uh, the, the Holy Spirit is manifesting these speaking gifts where someone is coming under unction of Holy Spirit and releasing a word, uh, they're freaking out because they're like, oh, we've seen this before, but it wasn't legitimate. Like, it, it, there was something behind it, but it wasn't God. And we don't know that we want this. We're not sure. And Paul's like, relax, it's okay. Because with these speaking gifts, there is another gift and that's discernment. And when someone, you know, maybe it's a prophecy like we see in scripture, maybe it's a word of knowledge, maybe it's wisdom, one of the speaking gifts uh, like tongues and stuff like that. Maybe it's that, or maybe it's just what someone is saying. And that's where I'm really gonna hone in a good bit here today is yes, all of those things need to be tested and should, but what about the everyday walking alongside someone and you begin to get some flags? And they're not like, I prophesy, but the things they're saying, you're just like, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure about that. And I wanna, let's talk about testing everything that someone speaks. Let's talk about testing fruit and uh, kind of take the principles that are there and, and open it up a little bit. And like, what are, what are we seeing here that we can actually see without it being this moment in the assembly, which is really what Paul is addressing, where somebody's releasing a word of knowledge. Um, they need to be tested as well. But I'm talking more about like, how about the people that we're running with? What if they're saying something? And it's just like, I don't know where that's in the Bible or like, I'm not sure about that or I'm not sure of your motive. That's kind of where I'm going to be going a lot. And I don't know if we'll get through this all in one sitting or not, because let's just face it. There's a lot to learn and it's okay that we take our time and go slow. You can even tell I'm talking very slowly today. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start. Um, Actually, I'm going to close that out. So in, in the Corinthian church situation, those manifested gifts, there is this gift of discerning spirits. It's this gift of being able to test. And what is happening is, is that person is going to be operating through Holy Spirit. It's nothing that they are doing. It's a gift. Uh, but they're yielding to him. They're, they're coming alongside him. And he's saying, that's not Holy Spirit. And I've shared that a couple of times that we've seen at our church, uh, which we do see quite a bit of interesting supernatural things there and uh and my daughter kate was like not holy spirit that's exactly the manifested gift that we're talking about that it's that discernment where it's like i don't know what it is or but i just know it's not holy spirit you have to know the spirit of god and i've said this in other ways and in other messages but like the best way to understand a counterfeit is to know who god really is and um the, he has spoken 
And I'm all about words of knowledge and wisdom and prophecy and all that. I teach on it. I operate in it. I practice it. But I'm, I'm a Bible reader more than any of those. Uh, because how do we best discern ourselves if we're hearing from the Lord other than knowing what he's already said, his character and his nature, his will, which is laid out in this book. Um, so even as a worship leader, like the very best thing I can offer people is being a student of the word. And, um, and when I meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, like the best thing I can offer them is being a student of the word and understanding, because this is a revelation of God. Like he is revealed in this book and it is huge there. You're not going to run out of things to read here and learn. And so discernment paired with good Bible reading and scholarship and study and consistent consistency in the word is really just going to grow because the more you understand the legitimate thing, the more the illegitimate is going to be so apparent. And so that's what's going on there. So I've covered the Corinthian part a little bit. Like you need to understand like that discerning gift is related to the speaking gifts contextually because in the pagan culture, they did a lot of speaking as well, but it was not under a, it was not under Holy Spirit. It was under a different kind of spirit, which is why you need discerning. Okay. Did you know spirits talk? I mean, that's, that's a takeaway there of like, wow, like a spirit can move through a person or be on or in them and actually say some things. And are you going to listen to that? That's why I don't let just anyone pray for me. That's also why I won't just meet with just anyone. Unless the Lord gives me a, a flag of like, mm, something's off in that, then like I don't need to even sit under that because the listening, there's an effect like the enemy, right? Eve is deceived because she's listening. And there's some things I just don't need to listen to because then I don't even have to fight the deception off because I'm listening to Holy Spirit say, just don't do that. And um, I mean, this goes for everything. This goes for shows you watch, music you listen to. There's just something about letting the gates of your body be for the Lord and be pure and holy in all ways. Okay, so let's jump over to 1 John. I love the first John uh, is like kind of an intense letter. Uh, the severity of holiness, the severity of the comparison of light and dark, which we know John loves his symbolism as we see in the Gospel of John. Um, it's pretty intense. Like if, if we are children of the light, if we're walking in the light, um, there can be no darkness because there's no darkness in God. Like the level of calling to living out and, and in the light fully is, is huge. But he has this whole little section on testing the spirits. And it's going to be 1 John 4, 1 through 6. But I, you know, I want to back up just a bit. If you ever want to know the context, you have to kind of go a little bit back. You have to see what's coming after. Because I don't want to pull this straight out. So listen to how he sets up this testing of spirits. Like, how did he get here? How did in this letter he say, like, okay, now you need to know about testing of spirits? Well, let's just just a little bit. He's talking about loving one another. He's talking about being able to distinguish like a brother in Christ from someone who's not. I mean, and if that isn't relevant to testing of spirits, I don't know what is. Like knowing, are we this? Are we worshiping Jesus? Or are you worshiping a false Jesus? Um, or are you believing something that's not true? So let's just look at verse 19 in chapter 3 for a little context, okay? You can do more on your own. I'm a big fan of context. I'm going to say it all the time. By this, we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. So this is for us to know, like, am I following Jesus? Like, am I, you know, we, it's good to question, like, am, am I, are my motives pure? Am I about the Lord? Am I about myself? What's happening here? For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. So like, let him search you out. Let him test your motives. Let him bring things to light. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God and convictions of the heart. I just did a post about it this week, uh, motives of the heart. It's something you really need to do regularly, especially if you're involved in ministry um, at whatever level, but a, a high capacity for sure, because it can get a little wonky out there. And whatever we ask if from him because, now listen, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Wow. We have confidence before God be, and whatever we ask, we receive from him. 
Why do we receive it from him? Because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him because it's about him. How do you know if a person is really a follower of Jesus if they obey him? And I've severed a relationship with someone before because they were not obeying the Lord about exposing something that was in the darkness. And it had to be. Jesus is saying, expose the things that are in the darkness. And because they were not going to do that, I broke fellowship because there was such a deception going on. And it was like, Jesus, 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 but there was no obedience. And so that was a false spirit. That was, I'm going to say a lot of things about Jesus, but I'm never going to obey him. Hmm then I don't think you're really a follower of Jesus because I can see your signs and wonders, but I don't see any fruit of obedience. And um, that's a problem. See what I mean? See what I mean? Can't go by what someone says. You have to go by what they're doing because faith is actionable. Real faith in Jesus is, is going to look like something. And it's going to look like obedience, not signs and wonders. It's going to look like obedience. I mean, it's just the word, guys. It's just the word. It's not going to look like prophetic words. It's not going to look like words of knowledge. It's not going to look like healing. It's going to look like obedience to his commandments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just the word. And it doesn't mean that those things aren't in addition, but they have to be in addition, not the primary. Primary is obedience. Disciples obey the Lord. And this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. That word believe, that's the actionable faith. That's not cognitive. And we love one another just as he commanded us. Another call to obedience. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God. If you are not obeying Jesus Christ, another word for this is lordship. I can already tell we're not going to get very far today. There's just so much to say about this. But if you are not obeying the Lord, he, he is not your Lord. He's not your boss. You are not letting the lordship of jesus christ enter your life therefore you are not abiding in him and therefore we would then have to question your actual salvation that's that's what i'm saying like that's how severe it is whoever keeps his commandments abides in god and god in him and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us okay now because he's saying this is how you know if someone is in christ now let's talk about the people that are not, okay? So let's take a look at then chapter four. So get a little context, boy, it's like a wham bam, right? Beloved, do not believe every spirit. So he's talking about, hey, if you see these things, that's something you can believe in, that's something you can trust in. But beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world. So you can see even here, the context here is linking it to someone who's speaking for God, but they're not really, they're not really speaking for God. They're speaking out of a false spirit. They're speaking out of a lying spirit. By this, you know that the spirit of God, by this, you know, the spirit of God, I'm sorry. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now already in the world. Okay, let's stop there for just a second. I want to break that down just a little bit. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. So what is that speaking about? Contextually, what is happening here is they're talking about doctrine. Do you know that Jesus came in the flesh, the incarnation? He came down, he took on human flesh, he lived a perfect life, he died a sinner's death, he rose from the dead a victor, he ascended as now sitting the right. Like, do you have good doctrine? One of the ways to test a spirit is to understand sound doctrine. You have got to understand theology. You have to know what you believe so that when you hear something that's a little bit off, little bit, you are able to know that's not true. That is false. Just being one degree off in sound doctrine puts you, like just that one degree, as it plays out, will put you in a completely different place at the end of the day, months or years. One degree off which is why we have to come back to this all the time with the Lord. Like, I don't want to even be one degree off in how I'm following you. Sound doctrine then is one of the ways, according to John, 
to test the spirits. Someone who refuses to listen, therefore, to sound doctrine is not from Holy Spirit. If you are not able to penetrate truth, they're not from Holy Spirit, and you can know they're operating under a different spirit. Does that make sense? It's good, right? It's right in the Bible. It's right there. Okay. Now, this Antichrist. So this is one of the, the problems when we're always looking for a figure of the Antichrist is we kind of ignore he's already here. He's been here. And I didn't make that up. It's right here in the Word. <laughs> so he's already here. Everything that is counterfeit, everything that's a false gospel. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. You get like a false Jesus. That's what Paul said. You get a false impartation, like you get a false spirit. Woo, what? That is Antichrist. Antichrist doesn't have to be this person that we're waiting for. He's already here because he's the enemy. Everything that is against Jesus, anti Christ, is of the devil, is of a different spirit, is not Holy Spirit. Okay. So that's another thing I wanted to say. Like, don't wait to test and don't look for just a figure. Be looking all around you. We are in a very interesting time and it's been going on for 2,000 years, right? For 2,000 years. John wrote this 2,000 years ago, nearly, to, to say like, be vigilant, like be looking, right? That is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. So good. Four, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So, I mean, how many times do we quote that, but we have no idea where that scripture is coming from? We're just saying it like, oh, he who's in me is greater than he that is in the world. Okay, well, what, what are we talking about? Oh, John is reassuring them that they're from God and they've already overcome the enemy because of what Jesus has done. That's crazy. That's just in the scripture. You are from God and have overcome them. These other things that are at work here, Satan and these spirits, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Wow. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world. This is all about speaking, what you are listening to, who is talking to you. And the world listens to them. So that means a whole lot of people are going to be listening. And the road is narrow. So that means the majority is not going to be there. We are from God. He's making a distinguished parallel here. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. Now, something about that, this is the sound doctrine piece. So when you're talking to someone who's misled, you, if they're truly of the Lord and they're just, they're just thinking wrong because they just have bad doctrine because maybe they went to a church and they, they learned wrong, they got saved under something and they're shaking it off like legalism. We'll go back to that one, right? They're gonna, if they're of the Holy Spirit, they're going to listen to what you're saying because they're going to want to receive truth, right? But if they are not of Holy Spirit, they will not come into agreement. There is nothing we can talk about. There's nothing for us to talk about at this point because you're, you're not listening to truth. And that's what John is saying. Like whoever knows God listens to us. So he's saying like the people that understand the truth, which John would be, he's an apostle. So he's like laying it out. If you're not saying that I'm speaking the truth, according to Apostle John, this is what he's saying, like you're not from God because this is the truth and you're not willing to change your doctrine and come alongside to what is accurate. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So there's this distinguishing, there's this, this distinguishing when we see someone willing to receive truth and come into repentance and come into proper understanding and sound doctrine then we know that's the spirit of truth working because Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. When we don't see that, then we know that that spirit is a spirit of error. And therefore we don't want to, we just don't want to keep going at that because that's a waste of time. Uh, we know at that point there's something else going on and it needs to be addressed a different way. It needs to be addressed with some authority, <laughs> some firmness, and um, we don't need to tolerate those spirits at all. So, sound doctrine is one of the ways, according to John, to test spirits.
spirits. And someone who refuses to listen to sound doctrine is not from the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times then they're just distracting you. They're taking up your time. Um, they can be saying certain things, but you have to see behind them. And we're going to get into that. I think we're going to just pause here. Um, we're going to cover some things next week um, about the demonic, about wounded and broken, woundedness and brokenness, people's will. Um, we're going to talk about the eyes being a lamp and um, what that really means in scripture. It's going to kind of blow your mind because there's something about people's eyes that you can perceive whether they are um, walking in the truth. I know, but it's right there in scripture. I mean, it's all right here. So much love. I hope this gave you something to chew on. You can begin to understand. Um, we didn't get to the Old Testament. Oh, shoot. Let me jump there just for a second. Okay, hold on. We're going to be in 1 Kings, and um, this is kind of a crazy situation here. I'm in 1 Kings 22. There's a battle going on. It's time for Ahab to go, and um, there's this, like, conference going on in heaven, <laughs> and and uh, the Lord is like deciding who's going to go. So verse 20, and the Lord said, who will entice Ahab to go into this battle where he's going to die? That he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And one said to one thing and another said another. And then a spirit came forward <laughs> and stood before the Lord saying, I will entice him. Okay, so some being, something up there, some spirit, doesn't say angel, um, will go and entice him. And the Lord said, by what means? And he said, I will go out and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. So Ahab had prophets. There was like schools of prophets then, um, big groups of them. That was just how it was in the Old Testament. And he's going to go out and be a lying spirit and have them prophesy incorrectly. That's why... You need to test the spirits because not everything you're hearing is necessarily from the Lord. And you need to be open to that. Um, also, if you do if you do operate in the gifts of prophecy and words of knowledge and um, wisdom and, and different things like that, tongues, like you, you better be really good with somebody questioning you if they get a flag. Um, so, and the Lord said, you are to entice him and you shall succeed. Go out and do so. The Lord releases a spirit to go be a lying prophet, like give a word of, to the prophets that are going to be lies. That's very interesting. There was a spirit that offered to do it and he's like, yeah, go do it. So that's why you need, I mean, I don't even want to unpack the ramifications of what that is. But the reality is not everything you're hearing that you think is God might be God. It might not really be God. Not everything you're hearing. Um, if you have flags from certain people, if you're wondering about their walk with the Lord, if you don't see a lot of obedience and fruit, like you need to discern and you need to test. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering that about yourself, it's okay to have those deep, I have those deep conversations with the Lord. Like I only want to do what you want me to do. It's okay. Um, so yeah. All right. I tied in that old Testament thing. Okay. Next week, <laughs> it's going to be good. Um, thanks for hanging with me and see what you get. Let me know what you're thinking about testing spirits. See you next time.